We're back here with Matthew Good. Got a record called Vancouver, but I've got a, a bunch of publications in my hand with some stories. And we're going to see what Mr. Good feels about this. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so we're in an issue of Time, which Time has got magazine, yeah. Obama on the cover about the war. Yeah. Uh, but the story that's selected is a river ran through it, climate change. Mm. It's a thing about climate change. Okay. Uh, Copenhagen is going on, lots of yeah. conversations about... Uh, I think it's fantastic how they had to bring limousines in from Germany so they could drive delegates to and from yeah. the actual uh, <laughs> the thing. It's uh, extremely environmentally responsible. Yeah, you know. I don't really know how anyone can, you know, that, that whole thing, that subject baffles me. Yeah. You know, the denial that, you know, for the first time in history or in my life, the Northwest Passage is actually open. But yet, of course, nothing's going wrong in some people's minds. It blows, it, it's just crazy. It's that. crazy. And uh, of course, this whole thing, well, it's, it's cold and, you know, it's cold somewhere. <laughs> so therefore, you know, they don't understand that when, you know, because the word warming is a global warming, that scientifically it's actually global extremes in temperature on both ends. And it's funny how uh, the, the one thing that people need to keep in mind is in terms of the geological clock, yeah. uh, a one-day weather forecast isn't really the story. That's very true. It's how it deals. Okay, so this yeah. is McLean's has um, Tiger Woods on the cover, but I don't want to, I don't care about that story. Yeah. Unless, no, well, you, I. no, I don't care. Uh, suddenly the world hates Canada. So this ties into Copenhagen and Canada's role. Uh, let me tilt this down a bit so you can read this. Yeah. Um, what do you think of that? The oil sands in Alberta uh, uh, is what we're obviously talking about, yeah? Oil sands, but also just the, the I guess the government, this current uh, uh, sitting of the house. It's the, ridiculous. It's ridiculous, you know, w w uh, how, you know, the whole Kyoto thing and, and, you know, and our objection to to really getting on board with something that I think that we should extremely, we should be world leaders in, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, obviously, after the oil prices fell um, or, or after oil prices rose after the invasion of Iraq, you know, we allowed foreign um, companies to come in and uh, tax them extremely low, I think 1% in Alberta to exploit the, the oil sands because it was a very expensive process mm -hmm. to do and it became lucrative for a while. We were actually, the province of Alberta became the largest oil exporter of the United States at one point. Um, How do you balance economy with, uh, with, with environmental concerns? Because the, the reality is for a lot of people, uh, they, they talk, they poll with the environment. The environment is important to people in terms of polling, but people vote based on how the economy is doing, and they'll vote somebody you know, else based on it's economy. It's interesting. It's, it's, uh, I have a really kind of bizarre philosophical view with regards to it. I think that we're pretty much a parasitic species on this planet. We do nothing. We destroy. Yeah. So our time will come. The earth, the earth will survive, and our time will come. Well, yeah, but... You know, you can't... People talk about getting our heads out of our asses, and, you know, that's not something we're ever really going to do. I mean, it's like, you know, I, I wrote something the other day, and actually I read it back to myself, and I was kind of like, yeah, that's a good point. You know, we have the ability to, we have the, uh, that happens quite a lot, actually. Um, uh, you, know, I, you know, we have the ability to feed the world, mm -hmm. and we could do it. Actually, to tell you the truth, in North America alone, we throw away more food yeah. uh, than, you know, that, enough to obviously feed the rest of the world. But, you know, we, we can, the apparatus is not set up to do that, yet the apparatus to destroy the world is set up to do yeah. it in little under an hour. But basing up what you're talking about with us being a paras parasitic species, well, if, if our time will come, that free will really isn't a part of this. We're just, we're just fulfilling our own destiny. And this isn't, that's, well, we're yeah. not, it's, not, it's not what humans well, do. Well, that's which Darwinism, is isn't it, though? Right. certainly is. There you go. <laughs> How about this one? Front cover of Walrus. I don't even need to open it up. Michael Ignatieff. I have no opinion on the man whatsoever. Actually, no, but, I have but no the, opinion. The next line says, why Michael Ignatieff hasn't knocked our socks off. The Liberal Party uh, had uh, Michael Ignatieff and thought that this was going to be their ticket out of the wilderness, and uh, they're not out of the wilderness yet. There isn't a political leader in this country of any party that I would trust with running a hot dog stand. <laughs> Wait a second. I, you know, I do think Jack Layton would be good at a hot dog stand. He grew up, because he had a lot of Toronto time, he, he knows this stuff. He could actually do it. Yeah. Well, car, the car, the auto industry, because that directly relates to jobs, but also bailouts all and all you that. need to do is, you know, I'll be in Detroit in March. All you need to really do is go down to Michigan and check out what's happened in Michigan. I mean, People are watching us in Detroit right it's now. It's a dead state. And what, uh, what are you, where, where are you playing in Detroit? At, uh, I think, uh... St. Andrews Hall. Right, all this yeah, nice so, but it's just like, you know, it, the big three have just been, have just been decimated. And, uh, you know. Here we go. Rolling Stone magazine. It's got, you know, the, the, the zeros, the aughts, and they're talking about the, the decade of 2000. Okay. The story here is the first iPod. That's the invention of the decade. Uh, agree or disagree? Uh, I don't, I disagree. I don't really know. I mean, isn't the iPod like an, I mean, it's kind of like the ultimate 
successor to the Walkman, mm -hmm. really, in a lot of, or the, the Discman, pardon me, this, I skipped a technology there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, I mean, it's kind of the ultimate evolution of it, right? So, yeah, but what it's been able to do is, it's, it's, it's not well, just... Well, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's Apple's back, that and digital downloads are Apple's backbone, so... You know, when, I think I first interviewed you uh, a couple of years before there was an iPod, and even Napster wasn't a player. The way, the way it became and everything that, that yep. happened subsequently. How has your career changed because of the technological boom, and has it? Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, most, uh, I'd say that the majority of artists I know that kind of, you know, aren't flying around in private jets, but aren't touring in vans kind of thing. Yep. We survive on our tour revenue um, and our merchandise revenue. And, uh, you know, as far as record sales go, I mean, the declination in the industry has been unbelievable. They dropped the gold and the platinum standard in this country. Uh, you know, yeah, I don't sell as many. Okay, uh, very quickly, what's your favorite uh, record of the 2000s that's not yours? And what's your favorite song of the 2000s that is yours? Ooh. Oh, I, that's such a difficult. It would probably have to be a, an Explosions in the Sky record. Probably The World Is Not a Cold Dead Place. Okay. I'd go there. And Your favorite uh, Matthew Good song from the 2000s? Uh, Avalanche. There yeah. you go. Matt's got a brand new record, which is called Vancouver. Go get it. We'll be right back with tomorrow's headline tonight.